Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Monday. It is December 12th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, looking forward to the cold weather, but you know, kind of cool this morning as well. 61 degrees. That's right. We've got some mist out there. I made a taco run between newscasts this morning and the windshield wipers are going every now and then. Justin Horn joins now. Uh, Justin, guess what? Your microphone is not on. Yes. All right. So we're going to wait for that to happen here. Uh, Justin is always amazed that we have a newscast at 9 a.m. It like cuts into the rest of his day. You know, I, I, this forecast uh, took me a long time to okay, get together. I That's believe fair. It. I okay. believe you it. get full credit for that. Uh, so I was running a little bit late into the studio, but I am here. My mic is on. Presumably. Yay! Uh, and uh, we're going to jump into all this weather with a guy we got father. going on. <laughs> uh, some fog drizzle this morning. We've got a front tomorrow. And then some more weather coming up this weekend. So there is a lot to talk about. Well, let's first start with the fog, though. Uh, we've got visibility down about a quarter of a mile at the airport, down to a mile at Stinson. New Braunfels about a quarter of a mile. Bernie Stage about half a mile there. Kerrville about a mile. So you get the idea that the fog is pretty thick this morning after what was a beautiful day yesterday. So a lot of back and forth. Um, uh, Del Rio is about a mile and three quarters and a mile and a quarter there at Eagle Pass. So there is quite a bit of fog uh, area wide. As far as our forecast goes today, well, we've got the fog and drizzle this morning, so there's going to be uh, dampness overall. And then we'll add in some showers into the forecast even as we get into the afternoon. Temperatures make their way up to about 72 or so today. And as we look at the weather headlines, fog drizzle early, then some showers this afternoon. Tomorrow's front expected to arrive early afternoon. We could get a storm with that, although the bulk of the weather will probably be to our north and east. And added to the forecast today, the potential for some weekend rain this upcoming weekend and some cold weather possible on top of all of that. So uh, right now we're sitting in 61, still kind of damp out there and the dew point sitting at 60 easterly winds at six. We'll talk more about this and I'll get myself together. Come up here in just a few minutes. Let's go over to Steven now and check in on those wet roads. Hey, you know, Justin, you are not the only one having a case of the Mondays, all right? Because okay. we did have some issues out on the roadway, led to some slowdowns, but things look a lot better. But conditions not necessarily that great. 37 at Hackberry, check that out. Very quiet shop there, but also very misty and also catching some of that fog that we've been seeing throughout the Transguide cameras all morning long. Now, as I mentioned, there were a few issues that had lingered around for quite a while. And we give you a wide look at the map. Notice that we do have some slowdowns take place on the north uh, near 410 uh, as you approach I-10. But I really want to bring you in here first. And that's US-90 right there as you approach Nogalitos and those eastbound lanes. You had a pretty significant crash that led to a slowdown for quite a while out there. But that has cleared out, so better news. And we take you up here. Another crash also cleared off of 410 northbound at Ingram Road. But still a little bit of a slowdown. Get you back here on Transguide 281 at San Pedro. You can see that the commute is moving just fine. No big issues, but of course, we're catching a lot of that fog on our Transguide cameras, but uh, also some road work still having to take place. So, hey, if you're still at home, why don't you grab your phones right now? And if you can scan that QR code, it's right there on the screen. Easy access that'll take you directly to our KSAT traffic page, and that'll give you the full list of closures right there. And I know Mark Austin is already planning his commute ahead of time. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Stephen, for the traffic update. And here's today's 9 at 9. An arraignment hearing is scheduled for today for District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry. It's in regards to the Class B misdemeanor charge for failure to stop and give information after a crash. This stems from a hit and run on November 6th. San Antonio Police have also filed an at-large case of driving while intoxicated against Perry. Brittany Griner is continuing her recovery here at Fort Sam Houston after being released from a Russian prison last week. She has not spoken publicly since her return, but she is expected to issue a statement this week. She also picked up a basketball for the first time in 10 months and did a light workout. Two major storms causing problems from coast to coast. Four feet of snow fell in parts of California, closing roads and leaving some drivers trapped. That storm is now moving east and could bring blizzard conditions to parts of the upper Midwest by tomorrow and severe thunderstorms and possible tornadoes to parts of the south. And in the northeast, snow and freezing rain will affect New York and parts of New England. The alleged bomb maker involved in the 1988 Pan Am Flight 103 bombing is in U.S. custody. All 259 people on the flight died, along with 11 others on the ground. Most of the victims were Americans. The suspect could appear in court as soon as today. 
The Mauna Loa volcanic eruption on the big island of Hawaii may soon be coming to an end. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the latest data indicates the volcano may soon fall silent, but scientists won't rule out the small possibility that the eruption could continue at a very low level. Investors are bracing for a couple of big market movers this week. Tomorrow, we get the latest look at inflation with the release of the Consumer Price Index. And the Fed's Open Market Committee kicks off its last two-day meeting of the year tomorrow. Economists widely expect it will raise interest rates again, likely by one half of 1%. Oil prices are climbing more than 1% with a pipeline from Canada to the U.S. still out of commission and Russia threatening to cut production. Still no word on what caused the leak on the Keystone pipeline or when it could be fixed. Lower demand for gas is driving down prices across the country. AAA says the national average for a gallon of regular is down 14 cents compared to a week ago and 6 cents from a year ago. After the successful return of the Orion spacecraft, NASA will now go through all the data collected on its mission to choose a crew for the Artemis II mission, which could take off in 2024. The historic Artemis I test flight aimed to test out harsh environments, deep space, and to demonstrate the capsule could make a safe return back into Earth's atmosphere. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And it's hard to believe, but we are in the final weeks of 2022, and Google has released its trending searches for the year. David Sears jumps onto the set to break down some <laughs> of the trending topics that people has uh, has people talking about here towards the end of the year. It happens every year. We forget some of the things that happened, like way back in January and February. I know some of us forget. Yes. Not all. Well, but I, it's, I it's do. It's good to review. <laughs> yes. So yes. some of the top trending searches on Google. Okay, so let's yes. take a look. 2022, look, the top trending search was Wordle. Wordle. Yeah, I does, can see that. If you're playing Wordle, does it count as a search? Uh, yes, because you have to look it up. Mm -hmm. Some people don't save it. So, well, no wonder it's the top trending yeah, Wordle. Yeah, because people gotta, play it every you day. you got to search every time you're looking for a word to yeah. go into Wordle. And what does that say about so, us that Wordle ranked higher than Queen Elizabeth but, or well, Ukraine? <laughs> Um, no comment. Okay. No well, comment. Ukraine's been going on for so long yeah. that, you know, I mean, it's it, it in one of the top 10. February. But, yeah. but of course, election results. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that? Is that election results like the results of the election? I think all, I think just everything to do with yeah. the midterms. With the election. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was, that was the mm -hmm. second trender, which is not sure. Now, now, see, this is the one that a lot of people uh, might have forgotten about, Betty White. That right. was the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the year. Betty right? yeah. White ranked higher than yeah. the Queen. Than the Queen. And then, of course, Bob Saget mm -hmm. passed mm -hmm. away unexpectedly. Right. And then you got Ukraine, Mega Millions, Powerball numbers. So every time you're searching for the numbers yeah. to see if you're a winner, right. they pop up. And Heche, remember, she crashed her car a into a um, mm -hmm. building or a house yes. right. and passed away. And they, uh, I think they recently came out and said that she was, she, her toxicology right. test came out negative right. when she right. was driving. That's right. So, and then this is, this is the most interesting one to me, yeah. is Jeffrey Dahmer. How many people... In this age group, the young age group knew yes. who Jeffrey Dahmer was. They had to study up. Right, because of and Netflix. Until Netflix came yeah. out. With and their that show. guy that played Dahmer in the miniseries yeah. was just nominated for a Golden Globe today. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. 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 Freaky. Freaky. Yeah. Cause of, and if you don't know, then Google it. Yeah. <laughs> right. add, exactly. Add, add to the search there. But Jeffrey yeah. Dahmer was convicted of 16 first and then a, se a 17th murder of young men and boys mm -hmm. back in the late 70s. I didn't realize that he was born in 1960. Oh, I didn't I realize that. Uh, yeah. yeah, he was a uh, he was a serial killer. And so Netflix has uh, got a lot of attention on him. All right, so yes. let's look at some trending people other than Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not surprising, Johnny Depp. Not at all. Oh, this yeah. is what's weird, though. Johnny Depp and then Amber Heard is third, and they were the ones that were fighting right. over all uh, that money. Well, and the, well the if Will Smith hadn't slapped Chris Rock, <laughs> he'd probably be further down the list. Yeah, he probably yeah, wouldn't I be on the list, so. probably, yeah. if right, he hadn't slapped right. Chris Rock. But I found that kind of weird that Johnny Depp and then Amber Heard's down here. Hmm. Antonio Brown, remember, he used to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He took yeah. his uniform off, threw oh, it up in the stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's kind of got some legal yeah. problems going on. Carrie yeah. Lake. Which kind of surprised, but then again, when you think about it, not a surprise. She is. She was the the former news anchor who was running for governor of Arizona, right? And lost just a couple of weeks ago. And she's suing a couple counties over yeah, those results. Over, yeah, over the way it goes. And then, yeah, Anna Sorkin. Yeah. yeah. 
Inventing Anna, mm -hmm. that okay. popular series. Well, look on how Netflix. low. Yeah, look Chris, how Chris Rock, Rock, Rock gets here. slapped, and he's lower than Will Smith. I'm glad Chris Rock has already played San Antonio because he'd be mad he came yeah, in seventh. Came so Chris, we, oh, we're sorry. We're Do you sorry. know who Andrew Tate is? Andrew Tate. Yeah, see, I, we, I had to Google it. Who, who, who's Andrew Tate? <laughs> I, I added to his search. He is a uh, kickboxer. Oh. He was a British American kickboxer, but now he's got, he's gotten himself into some trouble because he's very controversial on YouTube, and he does does all these podcasts, and he's okay. he's, he's basically been accused of being a misogynist because he says oh. some bad things about women. So okay. people, but but yeah, I did not, I didn't even know. I had to Google him. And then Adam, Adam, then Lee's Adam like, Lee, like, no, I'm on the list too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he did get a little trouble. He's on the, he's on the naughty, course, naughty you know, list. Yeah. One of the greatest tennis players to ever step on a court. Says yeah. farewell says to farewell. pro tennis. Never yeah. use the word retire. As far as I know, I, that's also true. I am so surprised that yeah. Harry Styles is not on this list. Harry, why? Well, um, maybe he will be in 23. Maybe he will be. Maybe. Yeah, but, you know. he's touring like he does. He will be. Why? Why would Harry Styles be on the list? Because. Because. I, I, I know. I know some people who may be searching. To Harry see. Styles. I yeah. guess I'm going to have to go look we're, at Harry Styles. Maybe I'll get him on the list. We're all Harry show. Styles fans, David. Yeah. Go up. He's mm -hmm. got some good I, I music. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm with you. <laughs> okay, thank you, David. You Thanks, Thanks so for much. playing along. 908, 61 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up next. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Tis the season of giving. Coming up, we're going to give you an inside look, a unique way how you can step up and help out kids in and around our area. But two other names that weren't on that list that we're surprised about, uh, Taylor Swift mm -hmm. and uh, Max Massey. Yes. In case that's Max Massey. But we're going to hear from him soon. Speaking of Max, Christmas and the holidays just around the corner. If you're looking for a great way to help out, Texas Yes is hosting clothing drives for local students. Max Massey now joins us live. And Max, how can people help? Good morning, guys. We need to get Taylor Swift in on this to help out. Much help is still needed, and it is so easy to do just that. Joined here with Danielle. So... Talking about Taylor Swift, probably have no idea what we're talking about, but what we're talking about is helping the kids. So for those who don't know, you know, tell us about the foundation, tell us about the project. So for more than 25 years, we've been supporting students here in San Antonio and over the last several years, other um, markets as well. But really, our hometown is San Antonio, and we care deeply about the kids that we support. And in, after we finished school supplies this year, we got with our districts and said, how else can we do more? And one of the biggest needs that they talked about was that they need coats and brand new socks for the kids that um, they serve. So we're currently doing a coat and sock drive for Harlandale and Edgewood ISD. And our goal is to support, is to support 200 students, 100 in each district. So we're about 50% of the way there, um, but definitely can use more coats. They can be gently used or brand new. Um, we do have an Amazon wish list. We can use tons of socks. Um, and really it's for kids of all ages. So all the way from elementary up through high school. So um, a lot of these students each year and their families visit the parent resource centers. And it's vitally important that they have the necessary clothes to be able to go to school and be warm and not be getting sick. And just the basic necessities such as socks. We talked about the Amazon wish list. How else can people step up and help out? So if you don't um, want to get online and do Amazon, you can easily drop off your um, gently new or used coats or brand new socks here at our office. We're located um, it, by the close to the medical center. And honestly, we're open from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, so you can stop in, swing by anytime, check out our new office that we just moved into in June, and really just learn more about what we do. All right. So guys, it is so easy. You walk into the office, you have your new or gently used yes. coats and socks, you walk over, walk over to this box, you put it in and you're gonna help a kid in need. One more time for us, Danielle. How many donations have you gotten? How many do you need? So we've received so far about 100 coats and we'd like to get 100 more so that we can impact as many students as possible, again, for the Harlandale and Edgewood ISD. All right, Danielle, thank you so much. If you guys have any questions about where, how, and why to do this, we're gonna have all that information, obviously on kset.com, but of course in the news at noon, and come on, step up, help local kids. Mark, Stephanie? Sounds good. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. And speaking of giving, don't forget about the Share the Shoes campaign, which ends this Friday. You can donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. All donations can be dropped off at any location there on your screen. Then they go to Zapatos, which works with schools to help kids get the shoes they need. And there's still plenty of time left to donate to the Salvation Army Parade of Kettles campaign. The money raised will be given back to those in need. Every donation helps no matter how large or small. You can donate by scanning the QR code on your screen. So far, Team Case has raised about $800 thanks to generous viewers. But we're hoping to reach our goal of $2,000 by Christmas Eve. And I think that is 
very possible. Yes, I think so. Taking a look out there with live cam, a little cool, ah, he's a little foggy out there, 61 degrees. Oh, you can't even see the little Whataburger roof right there in the corner. You can't, well, it's just barely yeah. visible there. That's about all we got. <laughs> Justin, walk yeah. us through your frustration, your angst, your concern about your forecast. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, well, temperatures, there's a lot of ups and downs in temperatures this week, and then there's, there's a couple fronts we have to be concerned about. One tomorrow that's going to bring a chance for rain, and then we may have some cooler air by the end of the week. There was a lot to sift through this morning. Okay. And that, that typically is the case here in December because we get pretty active weather uh, once we get these storm systems coming across the country. So let's first start with live cam as we go outside. And we've got, of course, the foggy conditions and the cloudy conditions and just dreary conditions overall. 62 Stinson, 62 Kelly, 61 Randolph. We've got a light easterly wind anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Visibility is the big issue right now. And you see the numbers are down, down to a quarter of a mile at the airport in Braunfels, Bernie Stage, Castroville, Hondo, most of Bear County shrouded in fog right now. Invisibility is down close to zero in Rock Springs. Uh, you, you name it. Just about everyone has seen fog this morning as uh, moisture has come back in. After what was a beautiful day yesterday, I might add, we got a, a dose of dry air, but it didn't last very long. So the moisture is back and we're getting some of that fog and some actual showers too. You see a little band of showers here coming into the city's south side. This is about to reach 410. It will work its way up towards downtown. So that will force you to use the windshield wipers at a slightly higher frequency uh, than with just this drizzle. And we may see a few more showers like that as we go throughout the course of the day. We're going to leave in a 30% chance of rain. So have the umbrella with you. Uh, temperatures make their way up to about 67 noon time. I think we top out close to 72. Obviously, the clouds are going to help us warm up all that much. Uh, southerly winds will stay fairly light and we'll keep again those chances of rain going right into tonight and even into tomorrow morning. We'll probably do this all over again. As we look at the big picture here, notice all the active weather out west. We got a lot of snow and higher elevations. This is that big storm system starting to take shape. Already has, really. I mean, there is uh, quite a bit of active weather as you look out to the west. Look at all these watches and warnings. So this red color here, that's a blizzard warning. We have winter weather advisories and warnings up and down the Rocky Mountains, but all the way down into parts of Arizona. This storm system emerges into the middle part of the country, and that's what helps to push our front through here. But uh, as it does, it's also going to create some severe weather. Now, I'll point out, this is the severe weather for today and tomorrow from the Storm Protection Center. Notice we are not within this uh, region. So really it's going to be to our north today where there could be some severe storms and then tomorrow out across parts of Louisiana and as you get into Mississippi and uh, down towards the Gulf Coast. Uh, our forecast calls for a few showers today, 30% chance of some showers. We see that going into the afternoon. And then um, as we get into tomorrow morning, clouds, drizzle, fog built back in. Here comes our front starting to make it in here. And I think probably early afternoon is uh, when we can expect this to come through. As it does, there's an outside chance for a shower or storm, but I'll tell you the better chance for that is gonna be to our north and east. Notice we only have 20% chance of rain in there. Uh, and any sort of severe weather, I think, again, stays well to our north and east. We're just on the tail end of things. It may briefly clear out tomorrow afternoon, and then the models are indicating a few showers developing behind the front early Wednesday morning, so something else to look out for. That shouldn't last very long, and I think by probably mid-morning on Wednesday, this is clearing out, and then we finally get the sun and drier air shifting in here. So that's that storm system. That's moving away. We get low humidity on Thursday. Thursday is going to be a beautiful day. And then as we get into Friday, so we get some cooler air, push the cooler air coming in here, and then that sets us up potentially for a chilly and maybe damp weekend. Indications are we may start to get a few showers on Saturday, and then on Sunday maybe a little better chance as a storm system approaches, and that would be a cold rain. So if you have plans this weekend, something to watch out for. We still need to nail down the details, I think. And of course, if you're doing some traveling too, you'll want to keep an eye on this. 77 Tuesday, tomorrow, Front comes through 67 Wednesday. That's post frontal. We get the drier air. Thursday is going to be gorgeous. We start off at 39, but we make it up to 65 and sunny. A little more cloud cover Friday. And then you see the forecast this weekend. Right now, we're calling for 40s 
and a chance of showers. So it would be chilly and damp. Okay, so there is a lot going on there, a lot to digest yes. and, yep. and um, room for some interpretation as the week goes on. Yes, and we'll be able to get you a little better idea on that weekend forecast as we get closer. Fair enough. Okay, yep. I'm curious about next week already, but we'll, we'll deal with this week for now. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. 920, 61 degrees on your Monday morning. After the break, meteorologist Mia Montgomery gives us a behind the scenes look at the holiday celebration at SeaWorld. We'll be right back. 924, welcome back. I don't know if you guys pay attention to our, our surroundings yes. here, but this is called our Octomon, a different monitor here. And I love it when they put in these giant holiday displays like this. Yeah, this is really pretty uh, you know, appropriate for our next story. Yeah, it gets yeah. us into the spirit. A lot of fun places to check out during this holiday season here in the Alamo City. And one of those, of course, is SeaWorld. Mia Montgomery got to check out all the fun stuff that they have this year, including some new performances. So check it out. Hey everyone, meteorologist Mia Montgomery here. This is my first Christmas season back here in San Antonio and at KSAT, so we wanted to go look for some fun, festive things to do around town. So we came out here to SeaWorld for their annual Christmas celebration. Let's head inside and see all the wonderful things they've got going on this year. All right, y'all, we are here with Chuck. Thank you so much for having us out oh, here today. To have... So festive. What can people expect when they do come out here to the Christmas celebration? Right off the bat, walking into the gates, nine million lights. I know, because I counted them. No, just kidding. <laughs> Although, we all, all the employees in the park took turns putting some of the lights up. Is there anything new here at the park? For Christmas this year is a show called Oh Wondrous Night. You know the story of the nativity and the very yeah. first Christmas. Well, we're going to tell that story, but the way we do it here at SeaWorld is with animals. How unique. Well, should we go meet some of those animals? I think maybe we should meet some animals. All right. All right, y'all. Now we are here with Drew, who is not only a cast member in Oh Wondrous Night, but is also a caretaker of these amazing camels. Tell us about some of the adaptations of some of these camels. How about you come in a little closer and give him a little brush on the face? Oh, you see, so cute. He is adorable. Do you see these big eyelashes right here? Those eyelashes actually serve to make sure that there isn't a lot of sun glare in their eyes when they're in the deserts to filter out sand particles. And those thick, beautiful lips that he's got right there serve to help them eat spiky veg vegetation like cactus uh, or other things that normally wouldn't uh, be accessible to animals. Talking about Christmas celebration, we want to give you a little Christmas gift, and that was to meet a beluga whale. Elizabeth, you have an awesome animal friend for us to meet here. Who is I this? Do. This is Luna. She's 22 years old. She was born right here at SeaWorld San Antonio. And if you want to come a little bit closer, okay. we'll get a nice big hello and get let her give you a kiss on the cheek. If you want to find out more information about SeaWorld's annual Christmas celebration, we've got all of that linked up for you at KSAT.com. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Oh, Luna was adorable. I wasn't know. She? What a fun visit. That would that would be the highlight of, of my visit if I got to go and see Luna. Fair enough. Six, uh, rather 926, several hours later, 926, 61 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a family spreading Christmas joy with their neighbors by decorating their home for the holidays. What inspired the couple to help out their neighbors. And whew, that was a close one. The Cowboys getting a win over the Houston Texans. David are back with RJ to break down highlights from yesterday's nail biter in Arlington. We're also talking Spurs. It was one of the deadliest terror attacks involving Americans in U.S. history, and now the living intelligence official accused of making the explosive device on that jetliner is set to face justice. It's a major breakthrough in the long-running investigation into the terror attack involving Pan Am Flight 103 that exploded over Scotland nearly 34 years ago. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze shares how some of the families of the victims who died in the attack are reacting to this news. After an investigation spanning more than three decades, this man, Abu Aguila Masood, is now in U.S. custody facing federal charges. Accused of building a bomb that took down Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland. It was the deadliest terror attack ever on British soil, killing 270 people, including 190 Americans. Bert Ammerman's brother Tom was one of them. Everybody loved Tom. He had two daughters at the time, six and four, a wife. He was 36, young. He didn't get to live his life. 
On December 21st, 1988, Flight 103 was en route to New York from London, in the air less than an hour when an explosion brought down the Boeing 747. Everyone on board was killed, including a group of Americans from Syracuse University who'd been studying abroad. Debris scattering so far, 11 people on the ground also died. Families can't walk away from this. This has been part of the legacy of their loved ones and their growing up. Massoud was at the time known as the chief bomb maker for former Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi. Stephanie Bernstein, whose husband Michael died in the attack, telling ABC News Massoud confessed to the bombing but to a Libyan authority, adding it wasn't clear that ever, ever we could get him. His extradition to the U.S. a major breakthrough. Catherine Turman, a former FBI assistant director who worked closely with the victims' families, calling it another step toward accountability, even after all these years. Now, it's not clear how U.S. authorities brought Masood here to the U.S. He is expected to appear in D.C. federal court as soon as today. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And let's take a look outside with a live cam. Can't see much, very foggy. And I hope you didn't put your sweaters away after we, you know, the kind of weather we had last week because we're going to need them soon. Yeah, no, don't uh, ha have the sweaters with you because it, it does look like as we look in the distance, look a ways uh, through the forecast. We think that there will be some cooler air, especially as we head towards uh, next weekend, perhaps. First, though, I want to show you a picture that talks about this last weekend. If you didn't hear, we got a ton of rain. If you weren't in southeastern Bear County or Wilson County, we got a ton of rain down there uh, over the weekend with some storms up to uh, eight inches of rain in some cases. And I'm assuming this is not supposed to be a pond. Uh, looks like the, the water piled up quite a bit. This is in Floresville after Saturday night storms. We appreciate the pictures. Really helps us tell the story. Thank you for sending that into our case at Connect. Visibility's still down. This has not changed since we last talked to you. In fact, visibility has now come down in Stinson. So it looks like the fog is maybe even thickening a little bit as uh, we head towards the 10 o'clock hour. Be careful out there. Uh, it's going to cause some issues. There is some uh, drizzle on top of that, so the roads are wet too. Pollen count is in. Molds are low. Mountain cedar is low. Good to see mountain cedar coming down from its moderate levels over the last couple of days. In your case, that 12 hour forecast, 30% chance of drizzle. We'll see some showers throughout the day. Temperature up around 72 for a high. Don't expect much sun and some chances going into tonight, even tomorrow morning until our front comes through tomorrow. And that brings about our changes. We'll talk more about the timing on that and how the rest of your week looks coming up in just a few minutes. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Thanks, Justin. And it was a wild game in Dallas yesterday between the Cowboys and Texans, but the Cowboys managed to get the win. As Spurs hoping to get a third win in a row against the Cavs tonight, David is back with RJ with a look at weekend sports. We begin with some breaking sports mm. news out of Austin involving the University of Texas. Yeah, shocking news here, David. Yeah, Mark, Chris Beard, the head coach of the Texas Longhorns men's basketball team has been arrested and he has been charged with third degree assault of a family member, quote, impreed best circulation or strangulation. We do mm -hmm. not know who the family member is. We do know that he is still in jail and the university released a statement saying mm -hmm. the university is aware of the situation regarding Chris Beard. We are continuing to gather information and monitoring the legal process. That is a statement from the University of Texas about the arrest. Yeah, and apparently uh, Austin police responding to a home there in uh, western part of Austin early this morning around 2 a.m. and then the arrest later on around 4, 14 this morning. So still gathering information on this, but of course, Chris Beard, a very high profile head basketball coach there at UT. The Longhorns, of course, are having, yep. what are they? They're ranked in the top 10. Top 10. Uh, yeah, one of the top 10 teams in the country. Yeah. Schedule to play Rice tonight, if, I, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So mm -hmm. uh, obviously he will not be on the bench for them. But once again, third degree assault of a family member, Chris Beard, arrested in Austin this morning. All right, let's yeah. get to the, the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. Here we go. Yes, Whoa. Cowboys. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, that's all you got to say? Whoa. I, I, the whole game, yeah. Whoa, I was Nelly. wondering what you guys were thinking about this. <laughs> Ooh, I was thinking I'm not believing what I'm seeing. No, absolutely not. What yeah. I was thinking. Well, the Cowboys were, what, 17-point favorites yeah. in this mm -hmm. game? Yeah. And uh, Houston, I mean, yeah. kept this thing close. I was hearing that Houston was thinking of this as their sort of Super Bowl, which yeah. is well, which makes sense, but still, Dallas like uh, a lackadaisical here. Dallas played like it was a preseason <laughs> game. <laughs> Except for that guy right there, Tony Pollard. Yeah, Tony is, Pollard he's, he's something special. Just a beast. And um, this, mm, this, here this, you go. Uh, 
loud uh, groans from David Sears this morning. That's called Texans having yeah. fun and the yeah. Cowboys Please. panicking. Yes, that was. Look at this pass. Yeah, they, Texans they mixed actually up two quarterbacks. So, so the Texans did. were like, uh, you, they used Davis Mills and Jeff Driscoll, and they there. also used Jeff Driscoll yeah. in, in there. And and um, oops, well there was a fourth down and goal that mm-hmm. didn't work. Mm-hmm. So, so Texans were up in this game, David, twenty three mm-hmm. to seventeen, then twenty three to twenty late in the game here. But right here, this is really what oh, that was could story. have been. The ending here for the Cowboys, but the defense bailed them out. Look at this. On fourth and goal, they go for it. Stop. Bam! Yeah. yeah. That was a stuff huge right there because a field goal really doesn't. I mean, Cowboys could come back and tie yeah. it and send it into overtime, mm-hmm. but they were going for the win. I don't blame mm-hmm. them. And then the Cowboys went on a 98 yard drive to finish it off with that Zeke Elliott touchdown right there and pull out the victory. They survive. That yeah, was the best survive. thing they did all day. Was, <laughs> exactly, was last the last drive. two minutes of the game. <laughs> yeah, which I guess yeah. that's when it counted for them. So, um, but, ooh, that was a little, that was a little H- close. Hats off to Houston, playing a heck of a they game. Did. They, they did. Played well. yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they played well. Yeah, definitely did not see that coming from them. And you should have seen the heads of Houston, man. They were, like, hanging low. It's like, we could have yeah. had this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that Should've was their game. It was their game, yeah. Had they... If they get that fourth down conversion, they go up by 10. And really, yeah. at that point, That's, the Cowboys are I, I don't know yeah. that the Cowboys can, yeah. could, could have come yeah. back from that. So the, the thing is, though, yesterday, why that was such an important game for the Cowboys. If they have any hope of winning the NFC East, the Eagles just annihilated the Giants mm-hmm. yesterday. Yeah. And so the Eagles are like, what, 11 and 1? 11 and 1 right now. And yeah, Cowboys, Dallas hanging in there at 9 and 3. Nine and three uh, so. Yeah, or it's, it's 10 and 3 now. And so, three. yeah, it's going to be, so, uh, it's going to yeah. take another so. Eagles loss somewhere down the line. And then they play the Eagles in Dallas on December 24th. So Ooh, hopefully, that's going to be hopefully. Good Cowboys yeah. have the Jag- Jaguars next. The Jaguars. <laughs> so we'll see. And the Jaguars aren't that good either, but I'm not saying anything. They like won the yesterday, though. Won that one. They did. Yeah. 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 So. Beat Tennessee on the road there. So did you guys, uh, Cowboys survive here. Yep. Did you guys happen to catch the Spurs playing on a, it was like a Saturday afternoon matinee. It's very it was random. Like four <laughs> o'clock Saturday afternoon <laughs> in Miami. It's like, yeah. well, huh? Yeah. Spurs are on right now? Yeah. <laughs> Go check them out. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? No, wow. I'm not. All right. David was kind of wow. going back to some of the older days. I'm Who's telling you, here? And, and we'll get to the end of the highlights here in a second. Devin Vassell, I think that's one of that them right there. Right Devin there. Vassell, yep. I mean, I'm not in no way, shape, or form comparing these to the Spurs runs right. of the 90s and the mm. 2000s. But, yeah. oh, man, it was like they were hitting shots when they had to hit shots. They kept the lead when they had to keep mm-hmm. the lead. Mm-hmm. And Miami just, like, missed a couple of shots down the stretch. And the Spurs, Devin Vassell hit two huge shots down yeah, the stretch. Yeah. It was Devin fun Vassell. to watch. It reminded kind of reminds you of the old days. <laughs> kind of, oh, sort of. a little bit, yeah. Just the way just they were bit. able to um, hold on to a win on the road against a much better team. Yeah. And and pull this thing out. So maybe this is like a, uh, a momentum builder. Well, two, two games. Row, yeah, two, right? two wins in a row. Yeah. I, I think we were the good luck, David, because we went to the game yeah. in Houston. So, yeah. We're going tonight. Game. See what we are happens. going tonight. Oh, okay. uh, but yeah, we Start, were the we good luck here. Yeah, we're going yeah. tonight. So watch out, um, Cleveland. We're coming for you. You guys Took care of business. shouldn't sleep at all, okay? Yeah, just, if you're not yeah. here, you're there. If you're not there, you're here. Right. That's how it feels sometimes, wow. honestly. But um, yeah, take care of business here on the road. So two-game win streak here. Devin Vassell came off the bench, David. Had himself a nice game. Uh, 19 points there. Six players in double figures. Jakob Pertl still out. But uh, Zach Collins played pretty well. Charles yeah. Bassey looking pretty good. And uh, Keldon Johnson also had himself a nice also had a nice night okay. so yeah. so tonight uh, it's it's Cleveland and we're gonna be there and it's gonna be exciting it's gonna be fun so come on down do yeah. we care how yes. they win no no. We don't care. <laughs> no we do not what is that like eight wins now <laughs> eight wins they're like yeah, two away from double digits here we go here we go yeah, that was close to double all the way. yeah all right <laughs> all hey how uh, about this did you stay late Friday this. night and watch this I, I'm, I'm guessing you guys probably <laughs> I heard about this basketball score <laughs> yeah this yeah. is something else man. yeah this was wild here uh, so some Friday nights of fun here you IW takes care of business on the road at Sacramento State to advance to the FCS semifinals, David. So, yeah, congrats to the Cardinals. Yeah, 66-62. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like uh, that's like a college basketball <laughs> game we were watching. I mean, back and forth and back and forth. Touchdown. And then uh, you want to see another touchdown? Sure, just a second. We'll show you one. And then another touchdown. And another, it's like, wow. Yeah, wild game here. So, the Cardinals so now take on... North Dakota State, obviously uh, one of the better teams in that division there. So this game's going to be Friday in North Dakota. So I'm pretty sure they're going to have to pack some uh, cold gear as they head up there. But congrats to the Cardinals, the furthest ever. Yeah, and congrats they've gone to Bernie history. and Bernie Post. Greyhounds. Mm-hmm. And Wimberley. And Wimberley. Yes, and Wimberley. yes. So three area teams playing for state championships. Post won or lost? 
Poth won. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. So Poth, Not Wimberly, and, and Bernie are and, all in the Bernie. And BISD canceled classes Friday, so yeah, everybody can go cool. to Arlington yeah, cool. to watch the Greyhounds yeah. play at Jerry State. World. Yeah, at Jerry World. Maybe we ought to go to that. Just maybe they'll oh, give us some luck. Yeah. And, and you guys are going to be busy. Good luck. <laughs> uh, that was a fun <laughs> a weekend in sports, yeah, guys. Absolutely. absolutely. RJ David, thank you guys. Thank you. 941, 62 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. Now to a story sure to spread Christmas cheer. A family in Indiana went, not only went all out decorating their own house for Christmas, they also decorated their neighbor's house for the holidays. ABC's Will Gann shares the heartwarming message that gave the family the idea to spread the joyous lights. This holiday season, Dustin and Aaron Beadle and their kiddos are making spirits bright. I wanted to thank you for your Christmas decorations. They are so beautiful. And being able to decorate our own house and, and have people enjoy it is heartwarming. Our youngest is three and he's really getting into it. And <laughs> Christmas spirit runs in the Beatle family. Dustin and his grandpa used to do big, big Christmas to the point that it was in the news. They won awards. They blew transformers in the neighborhood. And now the real life Griswold family's Christmas display is bringing that same Christmas cheer to a neighbor a little ways away. We're getting old, and but I'm, I want to tell you, every night I look out the back door and I see your decorations, and it just fills my heart with joy, so I just wanted to thank you. Erin was at work when Nancy rang the doorbell, holding back tears as she thanked the Beatle family. I'm telling you, it's just, it's just beautiful. But that small conversation sparked an idea. The Beatles asking permission from Nancy and her husband Tom to decorate their house with poinsettias and inflatable lights and garland uh, towards the end though tom came and uh he was in tears just looking at the lights and seeing how beautiful it was and our three-year-old wouldn't leave him alone he just kept like hold me <laughs> so we were out there kind of bonding for a little while yeah he said it brought back the christmas spirit to him so in addition to decorating their neighbor's yard, Dustin and Aaron Beadle have arranged for a Christmas Eve dinner to be dropped off for Tom and Nancy on the 24th. And Aaron has shared a P.O. box on her TikTok page for anybody who would like to send Tom and Nancy a card this holiday season. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. How nice. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. Justin, I was yeah. thinking something creative for your oh, beard for the goodness. holidays. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon has a multi-pack of, of mini beard ornaments, mm. 10 to $15. Yeah. If we got them for you, would you maybe consider it? Sure, why not? Oh, okay. All cool. right. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that done. Yes. So, yes. Uh, Timmy. Timmy. Yes. yes. <laughs> Here in the news our edit editor, morning editor, yes. one of our morning editors, Tim Stewart. Yes. His birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Timmy. Happy birthday. Uh, at our KSAC Christmas party, he was... Uh, bedazzled with all sorts of beard Christmas cheer ornaments. on his beard. Yes. It was uh, it was festive. Yes, yes, it was. If, if nothing else, <laughs> you have to, uh, you have to uh, compete uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> I would consider it. Uh, okay. We, we got to get into Christmas spirit somehow, right? Yeah. This weather's not helping us much. Uh, it, it will feel a little bit more like December going forward, guys. We got a front tomorrow, so that helps. Uh, in the meantime, fog. That is the story this morning. It has been thick. Still is. We've got visibilities down a quarter of a mile in several spots. New Braunfels, Randolph, Castroville, down to zero at Bernie Stage. So this is where it becomes a little bit dangerous, right? you got to watch your following speeds if you're out traveling. And know that the roads are wet. We've still got drizzle and actually some showers working through the area at this hour. This fog is widespread, too. Spreads all the way out to uh, Del Rio and Eagle Pass this morning. There's the scene outside, if you want to call it that. There's not much to see. It is... Uh, Pretty dense right at the airport. 61, the current reading. Temperature and dew point match each other. That is when you get fog. East southeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. I mentioned some showers too. We've noticed a little batch of showers coming south to north across the city. They've worked their way through downtown now, right along 410 on the north side, eventually working their way up towards 1604. We're going to see a few more of these showers throughout the day today too. So uh, expect to use your windshield wipers at least from time to time. You see the cloud cover. We've got low clouds. We've got the fog. We've got some high clouds over top of that. Some multiple layers of clouds here. That's not going to allow the sun really to come out today. And that means temperatures aren't going to move a whole lot. I do think we get up to around 70 or so by the afternoon. Right now, 61, 61 New Braunfels, 63 Hondo. Everyone's seeing cloud cover and, and fog. So we're pretty consistent here with uh, 60s for most of us. KSAT 12-hour forecast, 65 at 11 o'clock, 67 noontime. 
We'll keep in a 30% chance of rain today. Keep your umbrella with you. 72 is where we expect to top out. And the rain chances continue right on into uh, tonight with south southeast chilly winds anywhere from 5 to 15. You see all the clouds across the middle part of the country, and there's clouds out west too. We just the visible satellite isn't uh, quite out there yet, uh, just based on the sunlight. But uh, we're, we're going to see a lot of clouds across the country today and a lot of active weather out west. We've got uh, snow falling in the higher elevations. This is our big storm system, which is finally moving on board here. And I showed you earlier, you see all the warnings. There was a ton of them, blizzard warnings, winter weather advisories. There's going to be a ton of snow across the Rocky Mountains as this storm system moves across. It's dynamic. It's producing winter weather, but it's also going to produce severe weather. So today in the plains, North Texas up to parts of Kansas, severe weather threat. Tomorrow that shifts east and we'll see that around East Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. Notice we are not included in this. For the most part, any sort of severe weather is going to be off to our north and east. And in fact, we're going to be hard pressed to get any sort of significant rain out of this front. 30% chance of rain today with just some passing showers and drizzle. And then as we get into uh, tomorrow, clouds build back in. We see more fog and drizzle tomorrow. Still looking at a 30% chance of rain. Our front is scheduled for I'd say early afternoon as it moves through. There is the potential for a shower or storm and then it dries out a little bit. We may clear out some, but then the clouds build back in Wednesday morning. We could see a few more showers as energy passes by. And then finally that moves out and we clear out for good, at least for a couple days. And that will be nice. Slow humidity Thursday, probably even into Friday, but we get a secondary push of cooler air on Friday and then more rain comes back into the forecast Saturday and Sunday or so it seems. I think Sunday is probably a little better, brings a little better chance of rain, but it's going to be chilly no matter how you slice it. We'll get a lot of clouds, so uh, be prepared this weekend for cooler and maybe potentially damp conditions. We'll be able to refine that forecast as we get a little bit closer. Next couple days, 72 today, 77 tomorrow, then quote unquote cooler, but at least drier Wednesday, Thursday and some cool morning lows as well. That'll be good. You know, we're going to blink and Christmas is going to be on that seven day forecast. I know this. Uh, I feel like tw 2022 is just flying. It's been a blur. It really has, especially mm -hmm. the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it didn't, it's, it's yeah. almost over. We're officially going to be going into winter here. Soon, yeah, so. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, good talk, team. Yeah. Right now, uh, 952, 62 degrees. When we come back, we'll look at the top films and theaters this weekend. The Korean War drama Devotion made $2 million to stay in fifth place. The menu took fourth in its fourth weekend in theaters, ordering up $2.7 million. $3.6 million kept the animated adventure Strange World in third place. Is this our, our Santa Claus? Yeah, it is. To whom am I speaking? Well, for tonight, I'm Mr. Scrooge now. The Yuletide action flick Violent Night was the runner-up for the second straight weekend, finding $8.7 million under the tree. Stop! Right there! Who are you? And how did you get in here? $11.1 million gave Black Panther Wakanda Forever its fifth straight weekend win and a domestic total of $409.8 million, closing in on Doctor Strange in the Multitude of Madness for the second highest total of the year. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Okay, that's it for today. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe this weekend would be a good time to catch a movie. Yes. It will be, I think. Yeah, cloudy and cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a great day, everybody.